Uh, yeah, my name is uh, Aitor Aramnia, and I work as a postdoctoral researcher at uh, the School of Chemical Engineering at Aalto University. And today I'm going to talk about uh, this uh, well, research on new catalysts for hydrogenation of uh, carbon dioxide to methanol as hydrogen uh, energy carrier. And the uh, results that, that I'm going to present today have been done uh, within this uh, PULCAT project financed by the Academy of Finland. And this is a collaborative project between the University of Vascula, so the group of Carolina Honkala and Alto University. Yes, so a little bit about the uh, content of this presentation. So first we will talk about carbon dioxide hydrogenation to methanol, a little bit of background and reaction thermodynamics. And later I will show you some experimental results related to this research, mainly about catalyst preparation by atomic layer deposition, mainly some characterization results of this, of this uh, catalyst. And finally, some activity test results where we check how much methanol we were able to produce with, with our catalyst. And finally, some, some remarks. Yes, so let's start talking about the CO2 emissions. How is the current situation? So in this graph, you can see uh, the annual CO2 emissions from fossil fuels and industry. And in this uh, graph, I show you uh, the trend in the last 200 and something years uh, in the world and in some countries on, and continents like uh, China, Europe, United States, and I have included Finland and Sweden. So the general situation is that we are uh, in the world, we are producing about 37 gigatons of CO2. And if you see the trend of the last years, there are some countries that are doing a really good job, but still the trend in the world is increasing. So we are doing good things, but still there is a lot of work to do related to the CO2 emissions. And in this regard, the carbon dioxide hydrogenation is an important uh, reaction in this, in this situation. So what is this? So basically is it consists uh, in the mixture of carbon dioxide and hydrogen in different proportions. The CO2 should come from, from uh, well, it must be captured from the atmosphere. Uh, we have been talking about different CO2 production units, uh, for example, the steel, uh, industry and the hydrogen should come from renewable sources, uh, for example, like uh, water through electrolysis. We have also talked uh, a lot about this today. And what can we produce from this? Well, we can produce uh, from single molecules like methane, olefin, formic acid, or methanol. Also, we can produce gasoline, diesel, and jet fuel fractions by combining CO2 and hydrogen. But today we are going to talk about methanol, right? Methanol, we consider it a commodity chemical and it can be considered a hydrogen carrier. If we uh, use it in, in fuel cells and for example, in the steam reforming reaction for hydrogen production, it can be used also as a gasoline additive it can be even converted to gasoline through this MTG process. And it can be uh, used also uh, to produce what we call derivative molecules, like for example, olefins, formaldehyde, or acetic acid. And here you see nowadays the global demand of, of methanol. It's around 100 million tons. Uh, yeah. So let's focus now on carbon dioxide hydrogenation to methanol. And we can consider three main reactions for, for this one. And the first one is the CO2 hydrogenation to methanol. So basically we have one CO2 molecules, the molecule and three hydrogen molecules, and we produce one of methanol and one of water. And this reaction is exothermic. Then the second one is the reverse water gas if. So if we have CO2 and hydrogen in our system, we can produce carbon monoxide and water. And this reaction is uh, endothermic. And finally, 
we also, if we have carbon monoxide in our system and hydrogen, we can also produce methanol directly from carbon monoxide. And this reaction is very, very exothermic. So you can see that the methanol production reaction, so number one and three, they have a reduction in the number of moles from four to two and from three to one. So if we uh, look at the Lech Atelier's principle, the methanol synthesis is favorable at high pressures and low temperatures. Okay, this is basic thermodynamics, but we can also look at the thermodynamic equilibrium of these reactions. And here I want to show you uh, the effect of pressure and temperature. So in panel A, I show you the CO2 conversion versus temperature for different levels of pressure. And on the right hand, you can see the same thing, but for methanol selectivity. So you can see that uh, higher pressures, so for example, if you look at the 100 bars, you see how we can uh, increase both the CO2 conversion and the methanol selectivity. So the, the pressure has a positive effect in both. And in a similar way, if we go to lower temperatures, we, are, or we can maximize the production of, of methanol. Also, we can look at the effect of the hydrogen to CO2 ratio. So in a similar way, I show you the CO2 conversion, the methanol selectivity, but in this case for different uh, hydrogen to CO2 ratios. So increasing for uh, 0 0.5 to 10 has drastic effect on the CO2 conversion and methanol selectivity. So that's why it's very important that uh, the hydrogen that we produce comes from renewable sources, because for this reaction, it matters it matter a, lot, a lot. Yeah, so then uh, we can talk about the, uh, this is a catalytic process, so we can talk about the catalyst that we use. Well, uh, let's start talking about the uh, commercial copper zinc oxide alumina catalyst. So this catalyst, uh, is used or has been used in the CEO of hydrogenation to methanol for decades, and it was inherited for the CO2 hydrogenation to methanol. So there are uh, many studies studying the CO2 to methanol with this commercial catalyst, and somehow they all agree that after activating this uh, system with hydrogen, uh, there is what we call a copper zinc oxide interface, which is a highly active site for this reaction. So we have to look at uh, this, uh, let's say, interface carefully. So what was our approach? Well, we applied atomic layer deposition, ALD, for catalyst preparation. ALD is based on the sequential use of self-terminating gas solid reactions. So in other words, what we have is, uh, let's say we have our support with some active sites that can be, for example, hydroxyl groups. Then we feed a reactant A, and this reactant will uh, react with the active sites of the surface. Then we purge the system, we evacuate the system, and we will have something like a layer of this reactant A attached to the surface. Then we feed another reactant, reactant B, that will react with what we have on the surface. Then we evacuate the system again, and let's say that we can get what we want on the surface. All right, and we can repeat this as many times as we want. So let's say that we have, or we can have an atomic control of our system. So we decided then to uh, prepare copper zinc oxide catalyst on zirconia. So we uh, didn't investigate alumina. We decided to go with zirconia. And we decided to alternate the order in which copper and zinc were attached to the catalyst. So we prepared different configurations. And we use atomic layer deposition for the zinc oxide and 
more con conventional uh, uh, methods like impregnation for Kafka. So we prepare all the configurations that you see here. So the first one, we have the support and we put the copper by impregnation. And ideally we have something like this. In this case, we apply the atomic layer deposition and you see we have something like lonely zinc oxide species on the uh, zirconia support. Then we also prepare like a combination of both. In this case, what we did was um, we put the copper on zinc oxide zirconia. So basically we have this and we put the copper on top of it or after the zinc oxide. And this is the inverse. So zinc oxide after copper on zirconia. And finally, we also tried this zinc oxide, copper zinc oxide zirconia. So you see that we prepare uh, different configurations in order to study, uh, well, the uh, activity of them. We analyze our samples by different techniques. One of them um, was uh, we, we, we used the spanning transmission electron microscopy plus energy dispersive X ray spectroscopy, STEM EDS, to check if our metals uh, were evenly distributed on, on, on our samples. And actually, I, I saw you here two examples. We observed that copper and zinc were evenly distributed all over the surface for all the samples. So somehow we succeed in uh, dispersing our metals all, all over the surface. That's an important thing. Another important characteristic, you can imagine that if we are doing CO2 hydrogenation, it's very important the amount of CO2 that we can have absorbed on the surface. So if we have more CO2, most likely we can convert more CO2 to methanol. So this is an important parameter. And we evaluated this uh, CO2 absorption capacity by temperature program disruption with mass spectro spectrometry, so CO2 TPD analysis. So what we did here was first we saturated our samples with carbon dioxide, and then we increased the temperature constantly, and we monitor the uh, amount of CO2 that is disturbed with the temperature. Okay, and here you see the profiles that we got for the different configurations, and we also quantify the amount of CO2. And here I show you the results in two different ways as micromoles of CO2 per gram of catalyst, but also uh, we played with different units. So we saw the results here as uh, molecules of CO2 per square nanometer. In any case, what I want to show you is that we observed that when uh, well, the, the zinc oxide copper zirconia sample stored more CO2 than any other configuration. So you see the results, we see differences. So the order in which the metals are added to the system matters a lot. And we see that um, the CO2 absorption is uh, promoted with the zinc is added after because this was the second, uh, the second catalyst with the highest CO2 absorption capacity. So we, we observe uh, differences and, and we also wanted to, to test the activity of our catalyst. So how much methanol can we produce from, from, uh, from this? Ones? So here you can see a picture of our uh, reactor. By the way, I didn't mention that all the results that I am showing now have been published recently in Applied Catalysis Feed. It was accepted for publication recently, one week ago. And yes, sorry for the amount of, of results here, but uh, what I want to show you here is, or what I plot here is the CO2 conversion for three different temperatures. The methanol production expressed in as millimoles of methanol per gram of catalyst per uh, hour and the same thing per gram of copper and the uh, different selectivities. In our case, we detected methanol, carbon monoxide and methane. But what I want to tell you is that um, if we look at the CO2 conversions, again, we see 
that the catalyst where the zinc was added after copper, the conversion was higher uh, at 500 and 550. You see a real difference here. And if we look at the uh, methanol production, we also see that the blue dots corresponding to zinc copper zirconia and zinc copper zinc zirconia, they yield higher methanol production rates. So this is interesting. And then uh, something that we have been working with in the last uh, months is somehow related to the same thing, but uh, with different supports. So we selected that the zinc oxide after copper was, let's say, uh, the configuration with the best potential. So we decided to, pre to, to follow the uh, same preparation method, but on different supports. Yeah. So we tested all the supports that you see uh, listed here. And what I want to show you here is the uh, methanol production per gram of copper versus the meta, uh, met, uh, CO2 conversion at three different temperatures. We also included this uh, commercial catalyst that I told you earlier as a reference. So what I want to highlight here is that uh, at the lowest temperature, we observed like similar production rates at different levels of conversion, but still the conversion was very low. But if we go to 500, we start to see how zirconia and also the 17 serious zirconia let's say, outperform the uh, commercial catalyst. And this is even more noticeable here at uh, 550 Kelvin. So somehow we produce catalysts that can behave a bit better than the commercial catalyst. To conclude, I want to uh, say that the carbon dioxide hydrogenation has a large potential for the production of methanol. Hydrogen should come from renewable sources, such as water through electrolysis. And the research of new catalysts and new preparation strategies, for example, by applying atomic layer deposition, are key steps for designing better catalysts. And finally, I want to tell you also that uh, I invite you to watch this video where we uh, promote our book at project. This is available in YouTube, so if you want, you can go and watch it. So that's everything on part. Thank you.